across the way, Kemper Arena, the site of the Big 8 basketball tournament with the winner of this one going up against Oklahoma. The Sooners won game one tonight, and it is Iowa State and Kansas getting set to go. Pleasant good evening, everybody. Jay Randolph along with Gary Thompson. For those of you who have just joined us, great to have you with us. As Iowa State and Kansas get set for action, Gary to talk about a couple of the players we'll be watching. Well, Jay, two of the super outside shooters in the Big 8 Conference. First of all, for Barry Stevens with 25 points Wednesday night, he became the number two all-time Big 8 career scorer. He's been named to the All-Big 8 team for the second year in a row, and he's the kind of player that when he gets hot, he can turn a game around all by himself. And for Kansas, Ron Kellogg, also a brilliant outside shooter, 58% plus from the field most of those from outside that's second best in the conference he's had five 30 point games he was named to the all big eight first team and also the all big eight defensive team so a fine all around player Ron Kellogg well Gary as you mentioned early on of course these two teams had two dandy games during the regular season the coaches that you'll be seeing of course Johnny Orr for Iowa State Orr's done a splendid job at Ames and of course it's Larry Brown who now coaches the Jayhawks continuing that great basketball tradition and I think without a doubt you can say that he has done a tremendous job out at Lawrence Kansas well he certainly has, has and both of those coaches are two of the coaches in the Big 8 that have taken teams to the Final Four Larry with UCLA in 80 and Johnny Orr with Michigan in 1976. Can it happen again? We shall see. Tonight, it's Iowa State going up against Kansas in this the second semifinal and we'll be back to bring you the starting lineups right after these messages. Officiate this second semifinal game. Woody Mayfield on the left. That's J.C. Leinbach in the middle. Mike Corey on the right. A couple of other scores to bring you. A final and uh, Gary somewhat of an upset, I think some people might say. Alabama's defeated Georgia 74 to 53 down in the Southeastern Conference Tournament in Birmingham. In overtime, North Carolina, Dean Smith, the Kansas graduate, defeated Wake Forest 72 to 61. Loyola Chicago 65 61 over Xavier in the Midwestern cities. Remember it was Georgetown 74 65 over Syracuse. And Ohio University defeated Kent State 57 to 55. Arkansas is leading Texas 58-34 late in the second half. And it was Florida State 75-65 over Cincinnati. Well, that pretty much brings us up to date on some of the scores from other games around the country. Final on the Texas-Arkansas game. 66-46. And Arkansas, the Razorbacks, defeat Texas by 20. Eddie Sutton's club moving along very nicely. The two teams are on the court. There is Johnny Orr. He is a man who has put a lot of life back into Iowa State basketball, Gary. He certainly has. And the Iowa State pep band uh, playing that Johnny Carson theme. Uh, Johnny at the home games always comes out to that. It's got to make him feel like home here. And a pretty good contingent of Iowa State fans. Larry Brown there with him. Or 57 years old, his fifth season at Iowa State, a native of Yale, Kansas. And of course, Brown, 44 years old, a man who's never experienced a losing season as a head coach. Two years out at UCLA, he is the sixth full-time head coach in Kansas rich basketball history. There's Cy, the Iowa State Cyclone mascot, along with Coach Orr. Johnny Orr is assisted by Jim Hallahan. Rick Wesley, Steve Antrim, Brown by Bob Hill, Ed Manning, and John Calipari. Jay, you were mentioning uh, Kansas and the rich tradition and the number of coaches. I don't know if it said it on that piece. I didn't get a chance to listen to it there at halftime, but Dr. Naismith, only, the only losing coach in Kansas history, I think, record-wise. He only invented the game. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> there is Ron Kellogg. Kellogg, who has been something very special, the junior, 22 years old, a splendid season he has had. Kellogg averaging 17.9, the leading score for Kansas. 
Jay, there you see uh, Iowa State looking for first NCAA tourney berth since 1944. But going back to Kellogg, they asked him yesterday in a press conference, he said, you've had great Saturday games, 30-point efforts. He said, what about Fridays? He says, well, I don't know about Fridays. I just go out and try and play the best I can every night. Well, we'll be introducing the starting lineups of these two units in just a few moments. The 170th meeting between Kansas and Iowa State. KU leads the series 128 to 41. The Jayhawks averaging 77.1. The Cyclones, as you look at them warming up, 75.5. Two teams now headed to their respective benches. We'll tell you again, it was Oklahoma 104 to 84 over Missouri as the Sooners did a job on the Tigers here in game one to handle a public address announcement and introduce the teams for the second semifinal game. Mark Fitzpatrick, let's go to him now to announce the starting lineups. For Ladies the and gentlemen, here are your starting lineups for tonight's second game. For the Iowa State Cyclones, at forward, 6'5", senior from Fort Dodge, Iowa, number 43, Tom Peterson. At forward, 6'5", freshman from Flint, Michigan, number 44, Jeff Grayer. At center, 6'9", sophomore from Chicago, Illinois, number 33, Sam Hill. At the guard, 6'3", junior from LaGrange, Illinois, number 14, Jeff Hornacek. And a guard, a 6'5", senior from Flint, Michigan, number 35, Barry Stevens. For the Kansas Jayhawks, at forward, 6'11", freshman from Lawrence, Kansas, number 25, Danny Manning. At forward, 6'5", junior from Omaha, Nebraska, number 44, Ron Kellogg. At center, 7'1", junior from Wichita, Kansas, number 30, Greg Dryling. Dryling starting, but battling the flu here. At guard, 6'0", sophomore from Omaha, Nebraska, number 22, Cedric Hunter. Guard, 6'6", junior from Kansas City, Kansas, number 35, Calvin Thompson. Well, who will it be? Kansas, the Jayhawks, or Iowa State, the Cyclones, to face Oklahoma tomorrow afternoon in the Big 8 Tournament Final. We're going to find out the first action, first half action is coming up for you right after these messages. KU leads the series 128 to 41. Each team won at home this season, as Gary has indicated. KU defeated ISU 91 to 70 in 1979 in the Big 8 tournament. Here are the starting lineups. The Cyclones in their dark uniforms. Peterson, uh, Tom Peterson continuing to get the starting nod over the freshman Gary Tompkins for Iowa State. That's been a change in the lineup for the, about the last four games for Johnny Orr. Gary Stevens moving out to a guard position. Sam Hill to jump against Greg Dryling. Ball tapped around and controlled by Grayer. Hornacek, he's a key man in running the offense. Very smart little guard. Hornacek, the junior from LaGrange, Illinois. Well, it was Hornacek who hit the winning basket, the last second basket that led Iowa State dump uh, Kansas at Ames in the last time these two teams met. A 2-3 zone for Kansas. Jump shot put up by Hill, doesn't go. Thompson rebound. Partially blocked, look there by Dryling. Hunter to Kellogg. His shot won't go. Dryling bats it out, and controlling it for Kansas is Cedric Hunter. Well, Jay, I never doubted that uh, Dryling would play. I think it was just a matter of what temperature he's going to play at tonight. As he missed practice yesterday, had temperature running as high as 104. Well, he's white as a sheet, I'll tell you that. He really is. He looks really peaked, but here's a foul in underneath on Peterson, I believe. Well, Peterson's got the unenviable uh, task of guarding the freshman Manning. 
You see that statistic there. All five starters shoot over 50% from the field for Kansas. They're shooting 54 uh, one from the field, which if they continue, it'd be a school record. That record is 52-2. Kellogg uses the glass, and the Jayhawks lead it. His shooting percentage, Jay, I mentioned at the top of the show, second in the Big A Conference, 58.6, and most of them are from that range. Barry Stevens, number 35, hands it to Hornacek. Opening moments of the second semifinal here at Kemper Arena. Kansas opening up 2-3 uh, zone. Stevens wanted to fire from long range, but didn't. As Manning came out to pick him up. I'll tell you, Barry Stevens might want to move away from that side that Manning's on, because with his size, it's going to be uh, bothers him to shoot over in that zone. Offensive foul on Grayer. We'll show it to you right here. Good help from the weak side. I think that was Kellogg's uh, stepping in there. Good defensive support. Second team foul on the Cyclones. Iowa State, 2-2-1 two, two, press. They've been using all year after ball out of bounds underneath the basket or a made basket. I think for Iowa State, one of the keys in the early going is, uh, again, maybe stay with this game or get out top, keep the KU crowd out of the ball game. Stevens committed the foul. It's against Cal, or he did it against Calvin Thompson, and Thompson's going to go to the line. There's Bob Hill on the right of Larry Brown, two of the best-dressed coaches in the whole world. <laughs> they even wear galluses. You know what those are? Suspenders. <laughs> Calvin Thompson, the junior from Wyandotte in Kansas City, an All-American there on the all big eight tournament team last year that'll be a thrill for him to come back home uh, always to play here at kemper 81.8 percent free throw shooter four to nothing kansas uncharacteristic of him the other night in the uh, nebraska game which was a hard fought win five point win by kansas he was only one of four from the line in that game now a little pressure from kansas but it lags off sam hill getting it to stevens by Kansas that time uh, as a deployed there in a 1-1-2-1 type press. And the 43 out there is Peterson. That is Barry Stevens at his best. Well, he is one of the great outside shooters. Uh, probably has a little bit more range even than Kellogg and, and has more freedom in the offense than uh, Ron Kellogg does. Kellogg to Dryling. Turn around off the glass. That gets you well in a hurry when you hit that first shot. Six to two, Kansas. Now it's in a two-two-one press. Kansas this time picking up. Hornacek fighting his way into the front court. Peterson under nicely. Stevens put it up and a foul. Got a walk. No basket. The whistle was for a walk. The travel and that is two turnovers against ISU. Tough break for Iowa State. It since two and. Perry actually, I think, was fouled on the shot also, but watch him here. Takes it. One, two. I don't know from that angle. Uh, it looked like it was a pretty good play. The walk wasn't there. Calvin Thompson tried to hit Dryling. The ball ricocheted out of bounds off Sam Hill. It'll belong to the Jayhawks. Kansas, averaging 77.1 for Larry Brown, has given up 70.4% per game to their opponents. Walk there, travel against Manning. The Cyclones will come back. They've averaged 75.5. Their opponents, 68.2. Both these clubs shooting over 50% from the field and 70% from the line. 35 rebounds a game for the Jayhawks, 33.1 a game for the Cyclones. So when you look at these statistics, they match up very well. And Iowa State's defense was just tremendous against Colorado in that game. They had Colorado completely out of the game, just overpowered them. Grayer turns and puts it up. Jeff Grayer has his first basket, 6-4. to four. Grayer on the... All Big Eight uh, defensive team, uh, and that's quite an honor for a freshman in this league uh, to make that club. He's played good defense. Iowa State uh, with Grayer, a freshman, taking the toughest inside man. When Tompkins was in there, he'd taken the, the toughest outside man. He's also a freshman. Foul is on Hornacek. That is his first. 
team foul number four. Well, this is one guy uh, Iowa State couldn't afford to get in trouble. You see Hornacek breaking across, gets ball and hand as Hunter goes in. Kansas play it as we come back uh, live from out of bounds underneath the basket. Manning puts up the shot, won't go. Rebounded away by Hill. Here's Stevens. Kansas 2-3. Stevens dishing it out to Hornacek, and he hits it. Oh, that was a nice pass, and Hornacek was unattended. All right, good kick out. Well, Barry's drive into the middle took it. It held him off, or he couldn't get the shot, and good job by Stevens to find Hornacek open. Hornacek and Barry Stevens operating on the same side. And I started to mention that Stevens has moved away from Manning in the zone, which is a smart move. Game tied at six. Iowa State three out of four, Kansas two out of four. Kellogg from 20. Rebound taken down by Peterson. Hornacek on the run for the Cyclones. Takes it down, dishes it off. Stevens, his shot won't go. Peterson tapped it up. It's Grayer who taps it in, and the Cyclones have an early two-point lead. Grayer probably Iowa State's best offensive rebounder, but keep credit that to Tom Peterson. He was in there first to keep the ball alive. Second foul on Hornacek. Driving down was Hunter, and Hornacek committed the foul. We're going to get a timeout with 15-13 remaining in the first half. This the second semifinal game here at Kemper. Oklahoma winner over Missouri in game one. Timeout with the score. Kansas 6, Iowa State 8. Here Barry Stevens penetrated, dished out to Hornacek who hit the shot. Hornacek tries to return the favor, takes the ball coast to coast, draws the defense to him, passes off to... Stevens on the corner, but this time Stevens cannot get the shot down, but Tom Peterson for Iowa State keeps it alive, and the freshman Grayer up and in on the second follow. At halftime, Memphis State 38-30 to 30 over Louisville. North Carolina State leading Clemson 42-38. to 38. And St. John's leads Villanova 35-29. Larry Brown never lost a Big 8 tournament game. Manning's turnaround. Beautiful move by the freshman. Score tied at eight. Manning has his first field goal. A good look there at why he's the newcomer of the year in the Big 8 Conference. And he's 28 of 39 over his last three games. That's over 70%. Set a Big 8 record of 15 out of 16 in the final game against Oklahoma State. Hornacek did a beautiful job there, Gary, of changing the arc on that basketball and getting it down. 10 to 8, Iowa State. State man for man. That's been their primary defense. Turnover. Double dribble. Dryling and Hill going at it pretty good in underneath there. Good pressure by Hornacek and uh, for the fact that he's picked up two fouls already. Second steals uh, in the Big 8 conference to Tim McAllister who we saw in the first game and he got a couple three steals in that ball game. <laughs> underneath all alone Hill Dryling. Dryling just had his back to him. Didn't realize he was there, I guess. And Iowa State doing a good job of attacking the zone and getting the ball down inside, even though Kansas is probably the bigger team. That shot falls for Cedric Hunter. The sophomore from Omaha has his first basket. It's 12-10, Iowa State. Hunter ineligible last year at the semester has come back and now has regained that starting uh, spot, guard spot, and really been playing good basketball for Larry Brown. Hornacek has found the home out front. He has six points. 14 to 10, the Cyclones leading the Jayhawks. And ISU has now hit four straight field goals. Well, Jay, I, uh, we have some stations that have joined, as I mentioned, the first half, uh, this being the Kings home court and pro basketball they tell me this is a shooter's court right here because of the lighting in the background there's a lot of big games been scored here we had great shooting in the first game traveling against hill after hornacek made the steal look at sammy hill here's hornacek on the tail end of the play good pass to sammy hill steps once twice and back in three and there you see woody mayfield waving it off on the travel call Two traveling calls. Back to back. If he'd have put the ball down, he got jammed there on the defense. I think we'll see it coming back. Starts to get jammed. He'd put the ball down a little earlier. 
He'd have been okay. Hornacek comes up there, the turnovers, three apiece. Going to get a substitute coming in. Milton Newton will come in for Kansas when he has the opportunity. Newton is a 19-year-old freshman from Washington, D.C. That shot put up by Stevens wouldn't go. Foul on Calvin Thompson. His first team foul number one against Kansas as we have played more than six minutes, and that's the first foul against Kansas. Thompson over the back of Sam Hill had inside position, got inside on the zone. There's Milton Newton. He replaces Dryling. Milton Newton in the ball game. Jay only had three minutes of time against Nebraska, but they were crucial minutes, and he had three points and had a big block on Hoppin uh, in, that, in that game that really brought Kansas back in the clutch part of the game. Hit a tying shot that tied the ball game, I think, at uh, around 61 all. Cyclones working against this zone. There's Barry Stevens rotating through again. I think Smart, last time he was on Manning's side. Here's one thrown away. They tried to get it cross court. Thompson took it. And the ball batted out of bounds by Stevens as they tried to get it over to Kellogg. Basically, in this game, you think about it, there's Barry Stevens going back. I mentioned second straight year, an all big eight performer. It's Kansas. Usually think of them strength and power inside against Iowa State, a quicker. There's Manning. Danny Manning has four points. 14 to 12, Cyclones over the Jayhawks. We've got 12, 10 to go, first half. Peterson back out front to Hornacek. Probably because uh, Tom Peterson has just seen action, a lot of action in the last uh, five ball games. Kansas will lay off of him a little bit. Hornacek with his longest of the night. He now has eight points and he is four for four. 16 to 12. Off the glass, two points for Cedric Hunter. Good feed and a good job by Hunter coming down, getting to that lane, getting the angle where he could get the pass, and then a good job of getting it high up off the glass. Peterson cross courts it to Stevens. Hill loses it out of bounds. Started to move before he caught the basketball, took his eyes off of it. Boyle will come in for Kansas. And coming on will be number 11, Ron Virgil, for the Cyclones when we come back. 11 minutes and 22 seconds left to go in the first half here at Kemper Arena. And Iowa State leads by two. State off to a hot start, four for four from the field. You see the kick out here by Grayer. It's the ball down, and he's keeping Iowa State in the ball game here with a two-point lead, 16 to 14. One of the key players for Iowa State. Good Both shooting. Clubs, Gary, are shooting over 66 percent. I think there's something to this building uh, being, being a good place to shoot the ball. Both teams have hit their last four field goals. ISU is eight of 11, and KU six out of nine. Rebounds five for ISU, two for Kansas. There's Larry Brown. Overall, his record 89 and 33 in college coaching coming into tonight's game. Tad Boyle, number 33, the senior from Greeley, Colorado, in the game now. Boyle right there, trying to get it into Manning. Stolen away by Hill, foul on Manning. Manning's first, team foul number two against Kansas. The action going to Manning, Sam Hill over the side. Attempts to get it away, hits it back in. Let's see if it comes off of Manning. There's tie-up. Rule comes off of Manning's hand. This is Virgil, the newcomer for the Cyclones, getting it to Grayer. He's only seen two minutes uh, action about in the last four ball games. Boy, Grayer made a good, strong move. Six points for Grayer. He's only 6'5", but he does some good work in there. He's three for three from the field. Well, he was a high school center, Jay, and I've mentioned several times, so he knows how to operate in there extremely quick. Also a member of that uh, all big eight freshman team. And Boyle puts one up, it won't go. Rebound Hornacek. Tried to make a long pass, now does to Virgil. He banks it off the glass, Ronnie Virgil. First field goal, and it is a six-point ISU lead. Cyclones' biggest advantage. This Iowa State's game was Kansas missing. They get a chance to get out there and get out on that running game and free up for that open shot. Iowa
Iowa State has made its last six field goal attempts. Boyle from 17 comes up short. Rebound Hornacek. Foul called on Milton Newton. Dryling and Thompson will come back in for Kansas. And Iowa State will live with that, I think, with the give Boyle the outside shot. If they're going to get beat, that's the place to get beat from with Boyle shooting it. See the action. You see Manning moving Hill out all the way underneath the basket. And then Newton coming in here over Grayer gets called with a foul. That kid, well, there he's sitting on the bench right now, Milton Newton, but he's going to be an outstanding player for Larry Brown. Great quickness, great jumping ability. Virgil from 15. Oh, boy, that is seven in a row. You have to give credit to Ronnie Virgil right now. He was playing a lot off the bench. It didn't play for three games. Only two minutes to last. Come in here and hit two shots. That's quite a credit to that young man. Calvin Thompson took the shot. Here's Grayer off to Hornacek. Hornacek. And the string is stopped right there. And here's a foul call. It'll be on Sam Hill, I believe, or on Grayer. Well, you get it that, is on Hill. Excuse me, Jay. You get that shot going like Jeff has had it. You think you can hit it, but this time probably an ill advice shot because he's off balance. He'll stay with the good shot. Johnny Orr scratching his head right there. Nothing he'd like better. They feel like uh, they're in the NCAA with 20 wins, which is the most wins in the school's history. But a, a win here tonight, I'm sure, would uh, cinch a spot for them. KU is 0 for 4 from the field, the last four shots. Manning stops the bleeding with that one, 22 to 16, Iowa State. Manning has half a dozen. Well, the key here in this run is Iowa State moved it out to that uh, eight-point lead. Was it uh, Kansas been missing the shot? Iowa State's been able to rebound, you know, a shorter club, and get out in that transition game and convert. Of course, they had Dryling out of the lineup when they did a lot of that damage. He's back in there now. Grayer off the glass, got a nice pass. Grayer has eight points. 24 to 16, Cyclones. Boy, the poise of the two freshmen out there, Manning and Grayer, is unbelievable for first-year players. So Manning, there you see Manning makes another fine move, and he has eight points. And it's 24 to 18, Iowa State. Got to Manning is four out of five now. Right. Manning along with Delray Brooks at Indiana were the only two high school players invited to Olympic trials. That shows you what they felt with Danny Manning. Into the game now for the Cyclones, number 45, David Moss. Moss, a junior from Franklin Park, Illinois, an all-stater in Illinois. We're going to have a timeout. Well, we've got a good one brewing here in the first half. 7.51 left to play. Iowa State 24, Kansas 18. More Big 8 tournament action in just a moment. 57.1. Some scores. Game still going on. North Carolina State leads Clemson 46-44. Memphis State over Louisville 46-32. St. John's 41, Villanova 29. Those games all in the second half. And uh, ISU is 12 of 16 from the field. Hornacek will trigger it in. He's working with Stevens in the game now. Moss, number 45, Grayer, and the other man out there is Ron Virgil. Hornacek off to Virgil. Back out front we come with 7.40 to play in the first half. Iowa State really spreading the Kansas zone. Uh, they're going side to side and really spreading it out. Hornacek again up the middle. He got the pass from Greer off the post. Hornacek has 10. And this is where Iowa State lives from normally, particularly against that zone. They're a good perimeter shooting team, shooting 51 uh, plus percent. 51.5, in fact, on the year. For Cedric Can Hunter put it up, tapped up by Manning. It won't go. Here's Hornacek on the run. Stevens fires. Rebound. Breyer fouled. Right now, the Cyclones out hustling the Jayhawks. Seven minutes to play in this first half. The foul on Dryling. You wouldn't expect to see this much uh, offensive board work by Iowa State, a smaller club, but I think in the zone, their quickness is getting him inside. Grayer strong. Freshman going in here, does a good job, bringing it back off the offensive glass, takes it away, wards him off with one hand, and Dryling picks up the five. Grayer missing the free throw. 
Frayer is a freshman out of Flint, Michigan. Michigan player of the year. Has good leadership quality, I think, for a freshman, this young man. 27 to 18. Nine-point lead, Cyclones. The Cyclones in a 2-3 zone. and fires from 17. It won't go. Dryling batted it out to the little guy, Hunter. Now Dryling had it, lost it. Grayer took it away. Hornacek holds it up. Six and a half to play, first half. If Iowa State in that 2-3 uh, zone, now made it protect a little bit. Sammy Hill out of the lineup. They got David Moss in there, maybe to help him a little bit on defense by going to that zone. Kansas staying with that uh, zone of theirs. Hornacek over to Stevens. Tried to feed it inside to Grayer. Intercepted by Kellogg for Kansas. Down it comes and driving through and scoring is Cedric Hunter. Good Hunter. job. Good job, I was going to say, Jay, by Cedric Hunter there on the drive and flipping it up underhand. And again, high off that glass. That takes really good touch. Larry Brown upset about something there. I think maybe he wanted his, his club to hustle and get back. They're going to get Sam Hill back into the game when they have the opportunity. Barry Stevens dribbled that ball on the end line and turned it over. Hill will replace David Moss. Hill is number 33, the starter from Chicago, Illinois. Coming back from the knee injury. One of his big things we talked about so much is his foul problems. He's, uh, in fact, he set a record for Iowa State in fouls, 115 going into this ball game. He's fouled out 11 times. A rather unenviable record, right? you might say. Huh? <laughs> 27 to 20. But he has a tough job. A 6'9 and only 195 pounds going against some of the big kids. Stevens inside. intercepts in front of Thompson. Boy, he read that well, didn't he? Stevens now takes it down, puts it up. He is fouled. Dryling. That's two on Dryling. Five on Kansas as a team. I, Iowa State getting down, continuing to get down quick off the missed shots or interceptions. The case is here. Stevens goes up high to intercept as they went with the lob to Calvin Thompson. Perry Stevens taking it all the way. End line to end line. Look at him. Feel his way here. Now sees, cuts in front, and driving, going up, coming down and through on Barry Stevens and getting him on the wrist. Hill, a 65.3% free throw shooter, is the leading rebounder for the Cyclones. And this is, of course, Stevens shooting 80.6 at the free throw line and rebounding at 4.1 a game. Coming on is Tom Peterson again, number 43. Peterson, the senior from Fort Dodge, Iowa. Gary, I can remember you and I went to Fort Dodge about 10 years ago to look at a basketball player <laughs> one evening up there. 29 to 20. That might have been uh, Steve Bergeson. That's exactly who it was. <laughs> right. Manning puts it up. It doesn't go. And the ball out of bounds, but a foul on Dryling, his third. Dryling, who's battling the flu bug, now has to battle the foul problem, and he'll go to the sidelines. And that's one of the things that Craig Dryling's really improved on this year is keeping out of foul trouble, not making the unnecessary fouls. Here you see him going into the basket, strong, the ball's up, and Dryling over the top of Sam Hill, just making a swipe at the ball. Just looks at the official, picks up his third. Back into the game. Milton Newton, number 21 for the Jayhawks. This is a quicker lineup for Kansas in there now with Manning going back into the center spot and Newton in. Uh, they match up a little bit better speed-wise. Here's the jumper by Grayer. It won't go. Rebound to Kellogg. Kellogg, his pass comes to Thompson. Virgil tried for the steal. Didn't get it. Back out front, it comes to Hunter. Well, you can tell Iowa State is ready to play this game. Their quickness and reaching, they've got hands going. Reflection. Manning's shot doesn't go. Thompson rebounds, a foul call. It was Kellogg who took the shot, then Hunter, and then Manning is fouled, and the foul, I believe, will be against Peterson. And Stevens will come back in to replace Peterson for Iowa State. 
See Sam Hill made a block on the shot. I think we'll get a chance to look at that action now here again as they go up. Kellogg with the shot. We'll come off. There's some terrific board play under here and rebound. We'll see after Manning, I think, misses the shot. Here Kansas goes up. Calvin Thompson will get it up. Foul as Peterson comes down, but here Sam Hill gets up. Gets a good block. Might have saved the three-point play. Three for three now for Thompson at the line and three points. There's Johnny Orr. Overall career record, 316 victories, 220 defeats. He was head coach of Michigan, of course. Twice the National Coach of the Year. Peterson is out. Stevens is back in. That's Stevens, number 35. At the line, Grayer. Back out to Stevens. We have four minutes to play in this first half. The Cyclones lead it 29-22. Hornacek to Stevens. He fires. It's good, and he is fouled. Gary, he gets that jump shot off about as quick as anybody. Right? You just have to favor him when it's in the zone. Wherever he is, somebody has to be alert and aware of wherever Barry Stevens is for Kansas because you just cannot give him this freedom. Cedric Hunter committed the foul. We'll show it to you. Probably just what Larry Brown. See how much room he's got? That shot's off and gone before Cedric Hunter ever gets there. Then he gets him across the arm, and you're sending a good shooter and a good free thrower to the line. Peterson will return. You see him coming into the picture, number 43 for Iowa State. Ron Virgil goes out, and Stevens is on the free throw line, averaging 21.5 a game. I thought it might see with this quicker lineup in Kansas maybe go a uh, man-for-man situation, but they've elected to stay zone. And Iowa State continues to shoot the ball very, very well. Three-point play for Barry Stevens, the senior from Flint, Michigan. One of eight children in his family. 32-22 Iowa State. One, as we mentioned. And but Iowa State a sensational 70% here in the first half, and they've got a 10-point lead with 350 to go. Offensive keys. Kellogg had an early basket, uh, hasn't scored since. Stevens with seven points. Mark Turgeon's into the game for Kansas. Kurt Turgeon did not play the other night. A little guard from Topeka, number 11. You see him right there. He's been battling the flu also. Didn't even suit uh, Pellock and, uh, and Mark Turgeon. That's right. And then, of course, it hit Dryling. And Calvin Thompson a couple games ago was out against Nebraska the first time they played, not in the first round game. So Antonio Campbell's also had some problems with his teeth. Uh, Larry Brown's bunch has been a little under the weather. Milton Newton's shot won't go down for Kansas. Out of bounds underneath. Belongs to Iowa State with three and a half to play in this first half. Hornacek, Stevens, Hill, Grayer, and Peterson on the court right now for the Cyclones. The young men of Johnny Orr from Ames, Iowa. It is Turgeon and Manning and Thompson and Kellogg and Newton out there for the Jayhawks from Lawrence. Ball batted away and saved by Thompson. Newton, though, couldn't handle it. He tried to get it back in before it went out of bounds. Grayer was there for the Cyclones. Here comes Hornacek down to Peterson. Well, there were several great plays there. Even nothing come out of it. But uh, Kansas, Calvin Thompson saving the ball and saving it ahead. And then Newton going all the way. The pass was not quite there. And then Grayer hustling back to get in between and save what could have been a cinch basket for Kansas. So good hustle by both clubs. On the far side, Larry Brown standing like the conductor of the Boston Pops, working with his club. Iowa State has really been able to get into rhythm against this zone, and when they haven't been able to come out on the transition game when Kansas was missing some shots and getting down early, they've done a pretty good job of uh, controlling the clock. And you see the ground-level shot there as Hornacek now has a dozen. Six out of seven from the field for Hornacek. Larry Brown yesterday in the press conference said uh, Jeff Hornacek is one of the best-kept secrets in the country. He's had a splendid first half. Oh, good Kellogg. move by Kellogg. Oh, what a fine move is right, Gary. Good pump fake and then a step through. And he's got one of the longest strides when he steps out. He just blows right away from the defensive man. Ten-point lead for the Cyclones. Two minutes to play in the first half. Here at Kemper, the winner of this one plays Oklahoma tomorrow afternoon. 
The game nationally televised at 1 o'clock. Steven! I've got to believe there's something to this, uh, this arena, Kemper Arena, because both games have seen great shooting. Team shooting 48-50% and are behind by uh, 10, 12 to 15 points. You'll have to come out here and do some shooting tomorrow, you know that? <laughs> After that, uh, the ones I bombed in that first game, I'll have to. Kellogg in the lane scores two, and he has six. 36-26 with a minute and a half to go in the first half. The Cyclones up over the Jayhawks. Kellogg trying to bring the Jayhawks back. He's had the 10th highest season total points-wise in Kansas history. 556 coming in this game. And of course, the biggest season was the big, by the big guy, Clyde LaBelle, 886 points in one year. Stevens makes a move and then puts the jumper up. Sam Hill got the rebound. He's fouled. When Iowa State out quick in Kansas inside uh, on the boards. Amazing right now the number of times that Iowa State has got on the offensive glass and either got kickbacks or the rebound or fouled uh, on the rebound shot. Here's Barry Stevens. Well, here will go against uh, Thompson, I believe. Watch Hill now. A little Might have shoved off a little bit with the left hand there and then up quick. Getting up and gets fouled. Go to the line for two. Thompson committing his second personal foul. Hill was the all-public league MVP in the Chicago area. 6-5. And Boyle comes back in to replace Thompson for Kansas. Had Boyle, number 33. Mentioned uh, there, you see it. I was just going to mention that about him. Uh, All-Big 8 surprise team. Uh, team selected the players who came on and weren't expected to play as well as they did. And he's had a great, great year for Johnny Orr's 38-26, the lead is 12 for the Cyclones. I think Kansas is going to have to, uh, let's see. Kellogg is fouled by Grayer. Well, here's a position right now. Jeff Grayer, freshman, he gets the foul here, but you got a 12-point lead. I think you're going to try and give that shot. Stay away from the foul. If you go up after it, try and distract the shooter, but not commit the foul and let Kellogg uh, go to that line. Make him shoot it in now when they got a 12-point lead. Grayer's second personal. Boy, he looks peaked, doesn't he? Yes, he does. That's the word. He looks a little wrung out and driving, battling the flu. He's a much-improved player. Boy, he's worked hard this season. 38 to 27 now. No, I mentioned about, I don't think we mentioned that Greg Bradley was the second team all Big 8 performer and that, that hard work paid off. Boyle comes out of the lineup and number 22, Cedric Hunter is back in. So it's Hunter and Turgeon on the back line. Kellogg along with Manning and Newton up front. Kellogg's free throw. It's a 10 point lead for the Cyclones. 54 seconds to go in this first half. And it was Kellogg, you remember last year, that hit the winning basket that let Kansas beat Oklahoma in the final game. Peterson back to Hornacek. Iowa no State really stretching out uh, on that zone. Looked like right here, they're just running the regular man offense against that zone. They can take the clock down, and it would have 10 seconds for Kansas to operate. We're down to 15 left on the shot clock. And that's a good move right here by John Morris to, to run it down. You say minimize the number of... There's the seconds. shot clock you see up on top of the basket. Peterson with the jumper won't go. Ball out of bounds underneath. It went off Manning. Cyclones have Hill and Virgil and Peterson and Hornacek and Stevens out there. It'll be Hornacek to trigger it in. Now we got... Excuse me, J.C. Leinbach came over there, and I think they're maybe going to call. Yep, they're going to yeah. give it to Kansas. Leinbach helping out on the play. Well, you got one official uh, helping the other. Here's Peterson. The shot's going to come short and just come right down. There it is. See if we can see. Oh, and look well, like there's it went Manning off Virgil, coming. didn't it? It did there, unless Manning, uh, but Leinbach had a good angle. He was the position uh, over here in the wing, so he had a good angle to see the play. Eight seconds to go in this half. And Kellogg in a lot of trouble, fights his way through, takes the jumper, won't go down, tapped up, and it's good! It was Milton Newton, I believe. We'll have to check to see who tapped that in. 
It was Danny Manning. All right, thank you. Jay, this is a little thing, but it was a good play by Kellogg out here. I don't know if we've got it this far back when we see this play. Watch this. A low dribble. He split the defense. It probably time would have run out, but he was able to split the defense, get the shot up, which now allows some time in there on the missed shot to tip it in. It was Manning. You saw Manning him up there, gets it up, gets the bounce. This is another thing they told me. They have soft rims here, and the <laughs> ball will hang up there. Halftime, 38 to 15. Iowa State Cyclones lead the Kansas Jayhawks. Cyclones lead at 38 to 30. We'll take a quick look at the halftime statistics. Look at the shooting percentage there for ISU. Still at 64%. Again, it wasn't too far off. Uh, I said about 65%. And I think one thing's uh, a key in this game, uh, rebounds was 11 to 9, but Iowa State had five of those 11 were offensive rebounds. Hornacek leading the way with 12. Stevens and Grayer have nine for Iowa State. Hornacek, six out of seven in the field. Manning, 10 points. Kellogg, eight. Hunter, six. Manning was five for nine. I think one of the things that's going to have to happen with Kansas to win this ball game, they somehow have to change the tempo. So one of the keys early was that Iowa State, if they get out the lead, take the crowd out of the game, that's pretty much been it. But I think if Kansas sits in that zone the whole time, lets Iowa State in that flow, that uh, they're going to be in for trouble. Well, they turned it over and let Iowa State flow right down, and Peterson scored from the end line. Peterson, 40 to 30, 10 point lead for ISU. Kellogg dryling. This is dryling, turning, ball batted away. Kellogg got it back, tapped up finally by Manning. And now Kansas turning the table, doing just what Iowa State was doing to Kansas here on the first possession that they had a chance, was really hitting the glass. Missed shot, and then two uh, offensive follows, finally getting one down. This is Peterson, 43. He is out there with Hornacek and Hill and Stevens and Grayer. Hill in trouble, lost it. The turnover is the eighth for Iowa State. One of the other things that... Crowd trying to get back into it now, Gary. Listen to them. Well, I thought that last pass at the end of half might give uh, Kansas some momentum going in as they cut it down to eight. Backcourt scoring in this ball game, favoring Iowa State. Well, that is not uh, Kansas strength, that's for sure. Backcourt scoring. Uh, there There's right. another turnover, and Stevens charges down and a play. Ooh. Oh, I was about to say a great play by Hunter, but apparently there was contact. Hunter really got off the ground. Barry Stevens is a good leaper, and he put it up with the left hand. Hunter kind of circled him around. Let's watch here as they come up with the steal. Grayer, always present Grayer. Good lead pass, finds Barry, comes in. Watch Hunter going up. Let's watch again. Barry taking his eyes off him. There goes Hunter. And I, from that angle, I can see he gets ball, but he also gets part of the route. Stevens hits the free throw and he has 10 points. North Carolina State has defeated Clemson 70 to 63. That's a final. Oral Roberts over Evansville 74 69, a final. Half the state leading Louisville by 11 in the second half. St. John's 10 over Villanova in the second half. The free throws by Barry Stevens 42 32, the lead again, 10 for the Cyclones. Iowa State was again with a 2-2-1 press. Manning starts to assert himself right now, but can't get it down. Grayer got the rebound, gives it to Hornacek. Hornacek has done a good job. Remember, he kept or picked up two early fouls and has been able to stay in that ball game and uh, still only has those two. Well, you talked about the respect that Larry Brown has for Hornacek, and you can see why here tonight. And Larry Brown has respect for this entire Iowa State team. I've talked to him a number of times, and he just says they're a fine team with great athletes, and uh, that's what you fear most, that quickness and good athletic ability. Hornacek drives, shoots, won't go down. Riling rebounds. Hunter, long pass down to Kellogg. Spins nice. and scores! Same type of move. Good catch by Kellogg that time. Staying in bounds, then stepping back through again and getting it up off the glass. Show it to you again. What a move he makes in here. Good lead pass. Look at the catch. Ooh. Looked like might have been steps as you looked at it from there, but then the step through again. Good shot by Kellogg. Stevens from 25. Whoop. Point. 
Remember I said at the start of the show that he's the type of player that can get on a roll and take a, a game over by himself. Oh, good paint. Hunter all the way. Boy, I don't know where he found the room to slither through there, but he did. Yep. I don't know if we have a chance to see that, but he ball faked out to the corner, and that defense man must have stood just a little bit with the ball fake to let him get through. Hunter is four out of five from the line. From the field, probably. <laughs> yeah, from the field, I'm at. From the field, four out of five. That was Hill who took it. You know, Iowa State had seven baskets inside the paint, which is unusual for them. They're mostly a perimeter shooting team, and Kansas only three in that first half. Foul is on Hill against Dryling. Johnny Orr is upset with that call. Well, I, I think maybe when we see the call of Johnny Orr is more upset with Sammy Hill because this is the type of foul that gets him into trouble. You see Woody Mayfield coming there. Here's, why, there's moments ago, Hunter, well, we lost him. We're coming back live. Manning turns, won't go, gets it back. Manning tries again, won't go. Rebound Hill, Grayer holds on. Off the Hornacek. Getting a little rough and ragged out there right now. Good battle between Hunter and Hornacek. Hornacek uh, talking to the official. Tell, I can see, read his lips there, telling the official to get him off me. Hill underneath. Oh! In and out, driving rebounds. Good anticipation by Hornacek. Foul called on Hornacek. Ooh, boy, that's a delayed call. Really? There's Hornacek. Looks a little like the little Dutch boy in the ads, but he can play, I can tell you that. <laughs> he's deceivingly quick in first step in his actions. He anticipates very, very well. He and McAllister in the league, I think, anticipate about as well as anybody. Here's Hill goes up for the hook, in and out. Now you'll see the kick out, and Hornacek steps inside right here. Both go down in the play. They didn't call a foul right then when the contact was taken, and that was the interesting part of it. And Johnny Orr is hot. He's up getting close to that coach's box restraining line. You better be careful. Both coaches are hot. Dryling spins. His shot off the glass won't go. It's out of bounds to Iowa State. We're going to get a timeout. 15.54 to play. Iowa State 44, Kansas 36. We'll be back with more from Kepper right after this. He plays tonight, but this may be one of his best as he weaves his way through. Watch him ball fake the defensive man right there. That's Sammy Hill. Got him moving just a little bit away, enough to let him get through and up off the glass for two points. A good move by the guard. There's the ball fake. A good move of it. Moved the Hill, as I said, away just enough to clear the path in the alley to free himself up for the drive. Good play by Cedric Hunter. The field goal shooting percentage. Kansas dropped off a bit. Hornacek, Stevens, Hill, Peterson, and Grayer on the court for ISU. And Iowa State uh, out rebounding Kansas 17 to 50. Kellogg and Manning, Dryling, Thompson, and Hunter on the court for Kansas. The attendance tonight, 17,250, a sellout here at Kemper, a new Big 8 tournament record. Okay, let's see. We may have a combination defense as, as Stevens goes over it. It looks like they're playing Stevens and Hornacek man for man in a triangle. Triangle and two. Stevens has 15 points. The lead is back to 10. move and won't go down. Grayer gets the rebound. Well, for only 6'5", he does a good job on the glass, but he's... He's strong, Gary. Very strong in under there. Got Peterson! Oh! How about Peterson? All the way from Fort Dodge with that one from way downtown. Twelve-point lead now for the Cyclones. I'll tell you, most people felt Iowa State with the Big 8 Conference as tough as it is. Missouri losing 20 wins that did get in the NCAA, but a win here tonight with over Kansas would certainly... An ill-time shot there by Hornacek, probably. Right. Off balance again, here is Kellogg all the way. Boy, he's got an explosive step there. You can see it, he just blew away from the defensive man. 
Lead of eight for the Cyclones over the Jayhawks. Kellogg with 12 just will not let Iowa State get loose as he keeps the game in there. It looks like Iowa State might get uh, a real run. Well, they had the 14-point lead when Hornacek came down. That's what have struck to, to 16. Instead, it's back to 10. You got Kellogg is on the all-defensive team, Big 8 defensive team. He's playing Stevens. Follows him through man for man. Hunter's on Hornacek. Watch him follow. Now the other guys. There's Thompson. See, he left his man. Left his man, excuse me. But they're in a triangle and two now. Two men playing man for man and three men in the zone. Umbrella underneath the basket. That's leaving Peterson open. And he misses here. Grayer gets the rebound. Dishes it off the hill. Foul underneath. I said they had a chance to go to 16. I meant they had a chance to go to 14, Gary. They were up by 12. But uh, we've got 13-23 to go. Danny Manning commits his second foul. That is team foul number two. Hornacek with the inbounds pass. Grayer back out to Peterson. Good judgment by Grayer right there. Going up, didn't have the shot. A lot of traffic inside. Uh, dribble it back out. Save the, save the possession. 35-footer, Barry Stevens. 17 points for Stevens, and the Cyclones beginning to sense the big upset here. Well, he is just one of the great shooters uh, in the game of basketball, no doubt about that. Great range. You see where he's shooting that ball. I don't think Kansas can believe it because they've got to respect him. Went right through Dryling's hands, the pass from Kellogg, and back comes Stevens. And the... Iowa State fans, the cream and crimson, rooting their team. I tell you, contingent over on the far side there. You can see Grayer now. Each time he gets the ball, he's really looking for the hoop. Uh, he, he's got the hot hand. He can feel it. Jump ball. Be high up. It'll go this way, won't it? Go to Iowa State. Right. I said the crimson and cream. I guess I should say the crimson and gold, right? Just to be absolutely correct. Cardinal and gold. Cardinal and gold, all right. <laughs> Larry Brown. You know, looking at Larry, I've uh, been friends with him for a number of years. I tried to recruit him in AU basketball with Phillips. Didn't get it done. He went back in the coaching game with, with North Carolina at that time. He's assistant and one of the best moves he's made because he's one of the fine coaches in the country. Stevens again. 52 to 38. Now the lead is 14. Well, he's hit five in a row. And again, I go back to that opening where I said he's the type of player that can turn a game around all by himself. And he's hit five in a row. Driling underneath, but a foul called on Hill before the shot. Hill's third personal foul. Team foul number three. Foul number three, Sam Hill. That's his third personal. Here's Kansas Kellogg with the ball coming inside. Driling trying to seal him off. Hill fighting the guy in there and on the push off. Uh, Hill fouls Dryling. That's his third. Going to take a timeout with 11.59 to play. As we remind you, the Big 8 regular season drew 1,129,000 fans. A record season at the gate. The offensive keys in this game, Stevens 19 points and a rebound. Kellogg 12 points, two rebounds. And Stevens hit five for five. Uh, watch this pass. He's in three-point range right there. His toes just on the line. He gets the shot off. Boom. Nothing but net. On the other end, the way it's been going for Kansas, Dryling gets it in there on the lob. Misses the pass right there. His hands just come together. Saved by Stevens for Iowa State. Gary, the backcourt scoring. Stevens and Hornacek with 31, and Hunter and Thompson with 12 for Kansas. Big difference right there. Hunter puts it in play right underneath. Nice play to Thompson for two. Good job. Kansas needs something like that uh, to come back. An easy basket. Now they're picking up in a 1-2-2 two, two press, looks like. Hill bounces it down to Peterson. How many turnovers uh, in the second half? But it appears Iowa State's been handling the ball pretty well. I think they had seven, so they turned it over. Uh, Kansas turned it over three times this second half, and Iowa State only one. Grayling put up the shot, rare, and the foul charged to Cedric Hunter. 
Memphis State 81 to 74, a final over Louisville in the Metro. St. John's defeats Villanova 75 to 64, and that will set up a meeting between the Redmen and the Hoyas. There's Johnny Orr. Four 20 game seasons for Johnny Orr, including this one, the all time Iowa State record. Three of those were at Michigan. We had some great teams. Rare, just the freshman, very well rounded. Averaging at 11.9, shooting 52.9 from the field and 64.1 from the line. He has nine points, and he can make it a 13 point advantage right here. Riling rebounds, and the Jayhawks can get back within 10. Well, and Dryley that had the flu, and you see him. I think it's got to have bothered him some. He's only two points in the ball game. He's had some success as you look at a frustrated Larry Brown right now. I was going to say Dryling's had some success inside against Iowa State, scoring wise. Final on that St. John's Villanova game was 89 74, St. John's over Villanova. There are the turnovers in this one. Kansas with 11 and Iowa State with 9. We have 11 minutes to play. Grayer drives in, dishes it off to Hill. And there's a foul on the play. Good kickoff by Stevens on the drive. As he beats his man, then with the three-man zone back there, forces his zone to move. Good job of finding uh, Hill, and Hill just took it up strong and jammed it through. Here's the play. Notice... Let's see, this is Grayer, rather, Stevens. I thought it was Stevens shut off well by Dryling, but then Hill coming from the top side gets the pass and jams it down, and he was fouled. And that's four on Dryling as we look at it at low angle, floor level. Grayer does a good job there keeping away from the charge. Got himself under control. Keep from banging into Dryling. Sam Hill on the line. converts the three-point play. He has seven points, and it's a 15-point lead for the Cyclones. Well, Kansas has been the top shooting club in the conference, uh, 54%. Iowa State right behind at 51, but it's been Iowa State tonight that's been blistering hot. Kellogg now has 14. Kansas has Hunter and Manning and Kellogg and Dryling and Newton out there. It is Hornacek, Grayer, Stevens, Hill, and Peterson for the Cyclones. That was the job Hornacek does here. Doesn't have the extreme speed and quickness of a lot of kids, but is smart. He works the ball. He'll give a uh, go with a quick dribble step. Always under control with the ball. Hornacek down underneath the Stevens. He walks. Good look at Barry Stevens. Second all-time leading scorer in the Big A Conference. If he'd have probably put a dribble there and taken the ball up the other side and reversed it away from the defense even, kept away from that play. Dryling is out of the game. And it is now Thompson and Hunter with Newton and Manning and Kellogg out there. Boy, a lot at stake uh, for Iowa State in uh, this ball game. Uh, a chance uh, probably the first time ever to play on... Well, it won't be a complete national day, but a half the country will see the CBS. Well, parts of it will be seen nationally, of course. That's a bucket for Stevens. He has 21, and Kansas wants timeout. They got the outlet pass, and these Iowa State fans are starting an early celebration here. Nine minutes, 43 seconds left to play. 57-42, Iowa State over Kansas. leads all scores with 21. Kellogg and Manning leading the way for the Jayhawks. Jay, that last uh, steal by Hornacek and to pass to Stevens, that was Hornacek's 62nd steal of the year. That sets an Iowa State single season record, which was 61, held by Hornacek himself. So he just extends his own personal record by one. Iowa State shooting better than 63 percent. Iowa State, 20 wins this season, the best in Cyclones history. And right now, it is Kellogg and Hunter and Manning and Thompson and Milton Newton on the court for Kansas. We had Oklahoma in the first game challenging uh, 
the tourney shooting percentage record, which is 67-4. They didn't get it done, but Iowa State now 63-2 on the game. Calvin Thompson has eight points as he hit the jumper. And Kansas putting on pressure. Cyclones will have it as the ball was batted out of bounds by Hunter in front of Hornacek. Now we got a little uh, battle here between Kellogg and Stevens and see the official there, Woody Mayfield. He came in and said, gentlemen, let's back off a little bit. it to Stevens 25 footer won't go down oh what a rebound by Hunter the little guy went high into the air digs it out of there Hunter taking it all away oh the move and he's made some great moves and again it was a low dribble through traffic out here across half court that got him open Hornacek getting it up to Grayer this is the kind of tempo right now Kansas has to have to come back they've got to change it to get in the crowd some traps they're going to go all out. It's going to be game time one way or another right here in the next uh, three, four minutes. Hornacek took it right down the middle. He was fouled by Manning. Manning's third personal foul. Number 25, Danny Manning. That's his third personal. Well, here's Hornacek driving right down the middle. Goes three. There you see one slap. See who that was called on. But there's the hack right there with Manning across the arm. And you take Hornacek to the line. 84.1%. He's second in the league right behind Kellogg, who's at 84.4. Hornacek on the free throw line. Here's the man that Johnny Orr has admitted makes us click. A walk on, an academic all big eights. And made the UPI uh, all big eight second team this year. 84.1% free throw shooter coming into tonight's game. 59 46 Cyclones. Kellogg to Manning. Manning, the first move, can't get it down. And a foul called on Milton Newton. Breyer got the rebound. Newton committed his second personal foul. The Kansas bench, Ed Manning there, sitting just to the right of Larry Brown. There's Dryling sitting it out right now with the sniffles and the flu and... Ooh. Manning almost with a good steal. Stepped out of bounds. Stepped out of bounds. That's the pressure that Kansas is going to have to have. They're going to have to go with it, even though Iowa State's a quick club. Uh, and Larry Brown has talked about that. Watch him right here. Manning come across. There you see his foot. Good camera work. We talked about that crew, and you saw him at halftime. Indication of the job they do for the Big 8 viewers. Oh, that one came off for Kellogg. Just kind of hung there on the iron. 59-46, Iowa State with eight minutes to play. Grayer with eight rebounds now. That's almost two over his average. And this is Grayer holding the ball. Kansas, you can see their defense extended now, being much more aggressive. Iowa State running the clock seemingly here. 15 to go on the shot clock. 13-point lead. They're going to naturally use up some of that clock. Sam Hill, the Hornacek for 20-footer. Didn't go down. Hill gets the rebound, and they get a fresh 45. Oh, it's key there. It was a good move by Hornacek. Pass inside. He slid away from his man, which opened himself up for the shot. Hill almost lost it there. Holds on. Coming to the seven-minute mark. Left to play here. Stevens drives and he is fouled. Danny Manning commits the personal, his fourth. Team foul number seven. The one and one goes into effect with seven minutes to play. And Iowa State right now has only committed three fouls. And in the second half, free throw shooting, Iowa State five out of seven. Kansas has not shot a free throw. 
Stevens averaging 21.5 a game. Has 21. Make it 22. And he really got on a roll. He had about six games where his game was off, and he came back in the last regular season game against Colorado, which Iowa State had to have. Got on track, shot the ball very well, and then has just been sizzling ever since. Stevens is seven out of seven at the charity strike. 61-46, the Cyclones lead the Jayhawks. A little jumper by Hunter won't go down. Rebounded by Stevens. Now Hornacek. Hornacek and Hunter. And Hornacek's got a big smile on his face. He Hornacek, what he say? I didn't touch him. <laughs> As I said before, there, there isn't any ball player that says he ever touched anybody or ever made a foul. Well, he I missed field. the action. I didn't well, see I it. I saw it. Yeah, they, they, there was a little uh, shove, and then Hornacek uh, lectured him for a moment. And uh, then there was the shove from the other side. Still a word or two between them. Kansas really has their work cut out for him now. 15 down, 6.47 to play. Peterson double team ball batted around Hill comes up with it to the Cyclones good break for Iowa State there in a deflection that's the kind that can fall into Kansas hands take it the other end and get something going for them Peterson double team ball's been bouncing right for Iowa State but again I think it's Iowa State that's making it happen because they're just really hustling it's one of these all-out games There's Stevens he's fouled Kellogg wanted a traveling call and tried to get one, and he got a very stern look from Mike Corey, one of the officials, number one on Kellogg. Kellogg normally... Look at Johnny Orr, boy. Look at those eyes. Has he got fire in him tonight? <laughs> He's worried. And Jim Hellahan, assistant with him, uh, discussing what they're going to do. Boy, his club has really played well. He's really had him ready to play here in this semifinal game. Stevens perfect at the line. Uh, Stevens has had a great evening at the line and from the field, 25 points. Here's a jumper by Newton. Milton Newton scores for Kansas. 63-48 Cyclones. Nearing the six-minute mark left to play here. Hornacek gets it down to Graham. Iowa State, as we said, content to run their offense through, uh, trying to use up as much time now each possession. They've got that 15-point lead. Grayer working in off Manning, banked it up, wouldn't go. And it is Grayer getting it back, and now a foul call. Boy, Grayer looked like that time just with good, strong hands, took the ball away from Newton. I think it was Newton in there. Gary, this sequence here ought to show the fans at home how the Cyclones are battling. Well, you see Grayer going through down inside. Manning does a good job of keeping his hand out of their way from the foul. And there's Sam Hill, credit him there, keeping the ball alive. And Gray are right there. Strength, able to take the ball away with one hand, get it into Hill. And they called, uh, Gray or rather, was uh, fouled before getting the pass away. And Gray are being on the line, one on one. And Gray missed his last two at the line. The foul was on Thompson. Gray has nine points, more importantly, maybe nine rebounds. And he hits that one, and he has 10 points. Well, you need. He needed 14 points coming into this game tonight uh, to become the all-time leading freshman scorer for uh, Iowa State. That record is held by Ron Harris, who graduated last year. 65-48, 17-point advantage for the Cyclones. Kellogg, back out it comes, and it's thrown away. Hunter's pass for Milton Dutton went awry. 13 turnovers.
Rose now for Kansas. I think the key, uh, I think everybody uh, would realize with Kansas and Lawrence, Kansas located uh, so close, it's pretty much uh, a dominant Kansas crowd. But the important thing at the start of the game was for Iowa State to stay in the game or get a lead. And they pretty much kept the crowd out of this ball game. They led 38 to 30 at halftime. Now have built up a 65 48 advantage, five minutes remaining. Kansas now that zone uh, chasing, trying to trap out and get the double team. Peterson is fouled by Kellogg. Number two on Kellogg. Kansas club's a little frustrated, Gary, right now. They really are. Well, I agree with you, but uh, they're down. The time's waning away. Uh, they won this tournament championship there, and you see Kellogg coming across Tom Peterson's arm from the backside. And Peterson go to the line one and one. So they beat Oklahoma last year and would like to have done nothing better than repeat that championship. Peterson missing. Newton out to Kellogg. Kellogg back out to Hunter. Danny Manning in for Dryling. Dryling gets two off the glass. Four points for Dryling. Good step through, but I think important thing there, Barry Stevens is coming over to help. Was he let him go? Right now, Iowa State does not uh, want to get any three-point opportunities in there. They've got the big lead. They can make him shoot it in and give him nothing more than two. So I think it was a smart play on his part, turn him loose. Fire. Kansas made that run with the pressure. Nothing happened. Uh, Iowa State handled it real well. Good drive by Stevens. Manning commits the foul, and that is five on Danny Manning. The newcomer of the year in the Big Eight is fouled out. Thompson will come back in. Well, it won't be the last you see of that young man this year because uh, Kansas definitely, or the number eight ranking in the country, will go on and be in the NCAA tournament. See Danny looking up at that score. 12 points and six rebounds. Stevens caught Manning coming out and then took advantage of his quickness to make the drive. Manning trying to reach behind, flick the ball away, reached across the body. And Iowa State was one of their better free throwers. And Stevens at the line. Stevens, 25 points. At 25 uh, in the win over Colorado that got Iowa State here to the tournament for the very first time. Grayer got the rebound. He's fouled. Rare outfought everybody under there. Chris Piper is going to come into the lineup for Kansas. And he has an opportunity, number 24. Larry Brown. Best winning percentage among the Big 8 coaches. There's Piper replacing Dryling. You mentioned Larry, 47-16 coming into tonight's ball game in his second year at Kansas. The only time uh, in the two years he's been there, Jay, that Kansas has lost back-to-back -back games is when they lost to Missouri and Iowa State on the road. It's the only time in two years they've lost two straight. Hope Tom Williamson can get a shot of Dryling's face. He's realized what's happening here, and uh, boy, he's beside himself, the big kid from Wichita. Well, you got to commend him for just coming out of that oh, yeah. sick bed and coming out here giving it effort and giving he it all gave it a go here tonight and certainly not up to par. I, I don't want to take anything away from ISU. Have they played tough? Well, they There's played. a great shot inside. Put up by Milton Newton. I was going to say, Jay, to their credit, uh, regardless what, uh, they played a ball game that would have won against almost any performance tonight. They you bet Oh, I thought that was over and back, but apparently not. Well, it might be. I didn't see that when we were looking down, but I got a flash of it. It might be that uh, the ball, both feet and the ball, have to be over to be over That's right. back. That's true. But uh, maybe we can take a look at it in a moment. Piper fouls Grayer. Look at the best play here, Gary. Let's see. Is it over and back or not? Well, let's see. He's got one foot over there. The ball. Well, he had... Uh, Try to see. He caught the ball, so he had, didn't have the dribble over there, so he probably was uh, over and back and taking it. 
know we can run that again. You'd like <laughs> to see that one more time, huh? Rodney Hull into the lineup for Kansas, number 20. Hull is a freshman from Chicago, Illinois, Simeon High School. Gives this team a little depth up front. Calvin Thompson going out. The, the thing that I was questioning on there, the technicality of it, whether the foot was on the line, whether it's all the way over has to be or not. If it has to be, I'd better check that out. Uh, then it would, uh, it would not have been an over and back. 14 points now for Jeff Grayer. Well, I'm always giving Johnny Overby uh, something new. There seems like it comes something different up that you haven't uh, covered. Johnny Overby, of course, the supervisor official, so check that out with him. Timeout. 3.20 remaining. And the Cyclones lead it 69-52 to 52 here. Look at that statistic, and really, Gary, I guess you could say that, that, that's the game if you want to look at it that way. <laughs> Almost the spread, uh, a 17-point lead. Uh, no free throws for Kansas. I uh, asked the official, I got Mike Corey over here, and uh, on that over and back, the three points, as I said, two feet and the ball has to be over, and the foot has to be all the way over in the front court. So that was a good call. He was enabled and titled to go to the back court. Traveling call against Kellogg. Iowa State 58-5. They've fallen off a little bit shooting percentage, but not much. Kansas 48-9 in the ball game. But Iowa State has out-rebounded Kansas 27 to 19. Well, they changed their style just a little bit with this big lead to Gary, protecting the ball a little bit more and trying to run some clock. I've really been impressed with Johnny Orr's bunch here tonight, though. Well, the ability, you're right, and the ability to handle the pressure, even earlier when Kansas made their run, I think that was the key. I said the game would be decided in the next four minutes, and Iowa State was able to hang on, and not only hang on, but extend the lead. There's a foul. Number 20. Rodney Hull. I thought the key early on was the play of this fellow who would go to the free throw line, Jeff Hornacek. He had knee problems, came back from that. He made the all-freshman team, the big eight, now a junior. Hornacek did so much to keep Iowa State in the lead in the early going. Kellogg will come out. Turgeon replaces him. You mentioned Hornacek. Uh, he was six for seven in that first half, and most of them outside against that zone as Iowa State was just bombing the ball against the Kansas zone, hitting everything they threw up. But again, Hornacek I think, was 16 points. But again, I think the inside play in that first half where they got five offensive rebounds was the key that let them get out to that lead as well. When they did miss, they were able to get it, stick it back in, or, or get some fouls. That last shot by Antonio Campbell, who is now in the game, number 15. And they tried to get it under there to Grayer, Grayer and uh, ball went out of bounds. Two sixteen remaining. Johnny Orr. Well, what a great win for him. There you see 316 wins in his career. Going to get 400 uh, before he leaves Iowa State, I'm sure, the way he's going. That shot put up by Campbell won't go, and Peterson rebounds, and here's Hornacek for the Cyclones. Kind of the tale of the story right there with another rebound. Iowa State's just done a great job off the glass. <laughs> Minute and 50 to play. 71-52. Cyclones by 19. Well, this performance, if it wasn't there before, and I think it it probably was with winning 20 games, has to seal an NCAA berth for Iowa State. Well, I don't think there's any question about that. I know a lot of the committee members may be listening tonight. We're not trying to do their job for them, but <laughs> that's number three on Milton Newton. 
Peterson comes out of the game, and Gary, I thought he was just splendid tonight. He made some key shots outside and really battled underneath. And that's where he gives him some strength underneath. He's uh, probably the strongest physical player for Iowa State. He plays good defense. There with him, of course. Right. And you know the kid that came in, uh, Ronnie Virgil was instrumental in Iowa State. I mentioned he had been playing a lot. I know he's disappointed that he was out of the ball game. The last four games, only two minutes, but he came in and hit two shots in the in the first part of the game when Iowa State was making the run. Sam Hill scores the free throw. Eight points for Hill. One a second, Peterson out of the lineup. And Johnny Orr, almost unbelievable to look to see in Sam Hill still in the lineup. He normally sitting on the bench about five minutes ago. That's right. Here's Turgeon with a 15-footer. And timeout, Kansas. 1.30 to go. We'll take a break. 73-54, the Cyclones leading Kansas. <laughs> Iowa State leading Kansas. About to put this one away. There are the ISU supporters. They're still here. A lot of the Kansas folks have already headed to the turnpike. Yeah, this place is <laughs> emptied out uh, pretty well. UNLV 60 to 59 over San Jose State. Auburn defeats Florida 43-42. Grayer puts it up, won't go, tapped up underneath there, and that is scored to Raynal Harris. Guy they call Doc gets himself too. Harris is in there now along with Virgil and Grayer and. Uh, Gary Tompkins, who started earlier in the year, number three. Now Virgil is coming out. Okay, there's a look at Johnny Orr as he comes back. Iowa State uh, kids celebrating the first time an Iowa State team has ever come to this postseason tournament, and Johnny Orr has made the most of it. And Orr has brought in five years. There's a good look at Johnny. Has brought his club, finished eighth the first year when he took over a down program, is down to rock bottom. He went to sixth, to fifth, to fourth. And now this year, third. So Wes Wallace ready. is in the game for the Cyclones. And here is a foul against number 25, Harris. And number 20 will come in for the Cyclones, oh, Eli oh, Parker. Oh, there is Larry Brown. And he knows this one is over. The celebration with the Iowa State fans, they'll get their shot at Oklahoma here tomorrow afternoon. Turgeon on the line. And you know, they got blown out by Oklahoma down there, but they played them a ball game at Ames where they could have won uh, in a game up there. Turgeon right here shooting the first free throws of the second half. Four kids. Mark Turgeon, who came on the scene last year and spurted Kansas, did such a great job, uh, has not played as well this year. Antonio Campbell replaces him in the lineup. That shot is put up. It won't go down for Parker. Never takes Parker uh, very long to get up a shot. Three on one break. And a foul as the shot was put up there by Milton Newton. Newton doing a good job there, filling the lane. Looked like he was going to try and cup it and slam it down over. Defensive man got his hand there and committed the foul. Here's Hunter. Hunter had some great moves in this ball game individually for Kansas. Watch here. Newton's going to cup it over there, but coming from behind, picks up the foul was Wes Wallace. Wallace is first personal. Newton now with five points. You know, it's nice for some of these kids uh, for Iowa State. They haven't been playing. They don't go to the bench too much, but in the game down here to be able to say that they played in the Big 8 tournament game. Newton's free throws, and Turgeon returns for the Jayhawks. Kansas will be 25-7. and seven. Iowa State goes to 21-11. and 11. You mentioned before, uh, Johnny Orr's club setting an all-time Iowa State school record. They broke that when they got to 19, and now just increasing that, as you said, moving to 21. 
45 seconds left to play. Turgeon. His shot partially blocked there, and picking it out of the air was Tompkins. Parker getting it out. Number five is Rhodes. He put it up no good. The rebound underneath, put up as the shot went up by Wallace. And now it is Cedric Hunter with 20 seconds left to play. Turgeon. Two on one. And that one will be given to Milton Newton with 14 seconds left. Good job by Newton of staying with the ball. Made a great move just to get away from the defensive man on the first shot and get it up on the glass, then stayed with it, followed it down. Wes Wallace took a shot. A There's a foul or a traveling call. Four seconds left. Oh, listen to those folks from <laughs> all over Iowa. That I come think in that's, here. that's the first time I've seen Johnny Orr smile. He got a little smirk there. <laughs> he's been all business. You think he's not a happy man inside? This is a big night for the Cyclones. Over on the other side, Larry Brown. Piper from 17. It won't go. That's it. 75 to 59. Johnny Orr's Iowa State Cyclones defeating the Kansas Jayhawks. So tomorrow night, or tomorrow afternoon, I should say, at 1 Central Time, Oklahoma goes against Iowa State for the Big 8 postseason title. There is our final, 75-59. The Cyclones win it. Back with more in just a moment. Well, here at Kemper tonight, a lopsided victory for the Cyclones over the Jayhawks. And earlier, the Oklahoma Sooners came up with 104 points in winning very handily over Missouri. Gary, what are your thoughts about tomorrow afternoon? I think we'll see some running and shooting in that game <laughs> with Oklahoma and Iowa State. Both clubs like to get up and down the floor. Uh, tough game for Iowa State now to come off a mostly big win against Kansas. They're playing late. These kids aren't going to get to sleep uh, probably till uh, 2 in the morning trying to come down from an emotional high on this one. And you got to come back out here and play it at 12:30 uh, tomorrow. So that's one of the big things for Iowa State. Oklahoma played first, get a little bit more rest. But I think with a big chance and uh, the big win that Iowa State's had, uh, those kids will come out and be ready to play. It'll be the one thing, I think, of these two teams. Iowa State matches up better to play Kansas with their speed and quickness uh, than they do against Oklahoma. Yeah. Oklahoma is just as quick and a little bit bigger, maybe more powerful. So that's that's the difference. In